Video editing can be one of the most daunting aspects in the video creation process, and it's normally the part of the process that most people hate, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, we're gonna take it from the top with a full video editing tutorial for beginners using Mac. And even if you're not just starting out, then there's a heap of video editing tips along the way to help you level up your editing process fast. And if you're on Windows, then your video is linked up here. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we keep hearing over and over again from you guys in the Primal Video community is all around video editing. It really seems to be the part in the entire video production process that most people either hate or really, really don't enjoy. So the good news though is that we can definitely help you reduce that time spent painfully in your video editing software with an overall understanding of the fundamentals of editing a video and some simple tweaks to help you with your editing process. And the even better news is we're gonna cover all of that in this video. But before we jump in, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments, what's your number one tip for editing better videos or doing it faster? We always learn a ton down there in the comments with some people sharing some awesome tips and awesome advice from their own experiences. So make sure to have a look down there while you're leaving your comment. And once we've finished running through, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna give you access to a free downloadable guide that you can follow along with next time you're editing your video so that you don't forget anything. Okay, so first off, the software. Now, if you're interested, I've linked a video up in the cards covering off all the options and our top recommendations for video editing software on Mac. I'm personally using Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere, but that's gonna be a lot more complex and complicated than most people need, especially if you're just starting out. Now, if you're new, then I'd recommend starting out with something like iMovie or even ScreenFlow and run with that for now. Then you can come back in a few months time or when you start to outgrow those applications and you can look at what other options are out there or our other recommendations. So for this video, focusing on the video editing fundamentals, which you can apply to any video editing software, we're gonna be doing the walkthrough in iMovie. So those of you that are using iMovie, you can follow along, or you can really follow along in almost any other video editing application because these fundamentals are still going to apply. Okay, so here we are in iMovie. Now this is the first screen you'll see when you open it up. Now as we said, if you're using a different editing application, you can still follow along because the fundamentals are going to be exactly the same. So the first thing you wanna do is create a new project. So we'll come up here and click Create New. And we'll choose Movie. And this is the iMovie editing interface. We've got all your media that gets imported up the top here. So you can see all your files. Over here is your playback monitor where you can play back your video as you're editing it. Down the bottom here, you've got your timeline where you'll actually be doing your editing. And up the top here, you've got your controls for things like color correction and cropping and volumes and those sorts of things. So the first step is to import your footage or your media. So we'll do that by clicking the down arrow here. And I've got three clips. I've got the actual video content, me talking, I've got a music file, and I've also got a third clip, which is some B-roll or overlay footage of things that I'm talking about in the video. So I'll select all three and import them into the project. Okay, so now that we've got all of the video files that we wanna use in this project, inside the actual project, the first step is to go through and add all our content footage down into the timeline. So it's as simple as clicking on the clip and dragging it down into the timeline, and now that 24 and a half minute clip is down the bottom here. If you've got multiple clips, you can click and drag them one after another, just drag them down in the sequence that you want them. Now you can always pick up these clips and move them around if they're in the wrong spot, just by clicking and dragging on them and then letting them go when you want to drop them. Now because these three are exactly the same, I'll delete the last two here. So I just draw a box around them to select them, see they're gone yellow and press delete on the keyboard to delete them. Now we can zoom in and out on this timeline down the bottom here by using Command Plus on the keyboard. And when we zoom in, you get a lot more detail. You can see the audio waveforms down here, which is the visual representation of me talking or of the audio in that clip, which makes it really easy to see the parts where I'm not actually talking because there's next to no audio at that point against the points where I am actually talking. So this makes it much easier to find the parts that you want to cut out of your video while you're editing that down. And you've also got a slider down the bottom here that you can use to slide across to the start of your clip and across to the end as well. 
So now that we've got our footage down in the timeline, the first step is to go through and start trimming it all down, remove all the parts that you don't want from each of the individual clips. So an easy way to do this is to click on your actual clip. You see this, this yellow box around the outside. When you come across to the left-hand side of a clip, you'll get a different cursor with two arrows on it. If we click and drag with that, then we can change the start point of that clip. So we'll bring it along to just before I start talking and let go. And our clip is now starting at that point. Likewise, we can do exactly the same at the end, come across to the end. You can see that I've finished the video here and then I'll be doing some silly poses for thumbnails. So we can cut off all the extra content at the end. Now I can click on the clip here where I wanna make the cut. I can right click and choose split clip. So now we've got two clips here. Now I can just select this second one and press delete on the keyboard and that has been removed. So with video editing, there's normally more than one way to do something. It's just finding what works best for you and the types of videos you're creating. So once you've gone through and trimmed off the start and the finish of each of the clips in your timeline, the next step is to go through and really start editing down your footage. So you can go through and see this quiet bit here. We could take that out. So we'll come to here. We can add a cut, command B or right click and choose split clip. Exactly the same for here. Right click, split clip, and select the middle clip here and press delete. And that gap is now closed. So we'll go through and remove all the parts that you definitely don't want in the video until you've just got your content left that you want in your finished product. And if any of your clips are out of sequence or you wanna move anything around, it's just a matter of clicking on it, picking it up and moving it into the spot where you'd like it. Okay, now that we've got our video cut down to how we want it here, then the next step is to bring in our B-roll footage or our overlay footage. So this was our extra clip up here. You can see as we scrub through, there's a heap of different footage of me playing with some different cameras that we can use to show what I'm talking about in the video. Now we could just click on our clip and pick it up and drop our whole lot down onto our timeline and then shorten the clips down using the methods I just showed you. Or we can come back up here and just find the part of the clip that we actually wanna use. So I'm just moving my mouse along until I see the bit I want, probably around here where that camera comes in. And I can press the I key on the keyboard to mark an in point. You can see that that yellow box around the outside has now changed and it now starts at that point. Now we can do exactly the same for the out point where we want that clip to end, probably around here. I can press O on the keyboard, or I could actually grab this yellow handle on this side and drag it in to where I want the clip to finish. So probably around here. So you can see we've got a yellow box that just marks out that section of the video. Now all we need to do is click and drag that down into our timeline wherever we'd like it. And that piece of footage will now play over me talking. And the audio of me talking will still be playing through underneath it. And just like all the other clips, you can click on it, you can pick it up, you can move it around, you can adjust the length or the start and the end time on it, and you can apply effects and everything to it, which we're about to jump into. All right, so now that we've got all our footage in, we've got it cut down the way that we want it, and we've got our B-roll footage in over the top, or our overlay footage in, the next step is to add in any titles and effects. So we'll start off with a title. Let's click on this first clip here, and we'll put a name title on. So we've clicked on the clip, we'll come up here to titles, you'll see that there is a heap of different titles that you can use just dragging into your project. Some of them are animated. You see this one here fades up and gets bigger over time and then it will fade back out. So there's a heap in here to choose from, but for this video, we'll just start with the standard lower third. And I'll click on that and drag it down into the timeline about where I want it to start. So you can see straight away that we've got our text box over here that we can click, select and adjust the text in. So I could type in Justin Brown. And in the second line, type in primal video. Now when we come back here and play this clip, Justin Brown primal video fades in, it'll stay on screen and then it will fade out. Now just the same as all the other clips, we can pick them up and move it around. We can also adjust the length of the clip as well or how long we wanna have that title displayed on screen. So that's how you can go through and add titles wherever you need them in your video. Now if you wanna add any transitions or effects between your different clips in your timeline here, then you can come over here to transitions. And again, there's quite a few to choose from. The ones I'd recommend that you start with, or the ones that look the most professional in most cases, are the cross dissolve, the cross blur, the fade to black, and the fade to white. Some of these other transitions can look pretty cheesy. 
So it'll really come down to the type of video you're creating as to if you're gonna use any transitions and which ones you'll be using. So for this case here, we'll use a cross blur just to show you what that looks like. And I'll drop that down between the two clips and let it go. And now when we play this back, you can see that there was an effect between the two. So I'll undo that now with Command Z. After you've got all your transitions in, you can also apply any effects to your clips. So if we click on the clip that you want to adjust, we can then come up the top here and you've got a heap of additional tools as well. So the cropping tool here will let you zoom in on your footage. So if you want to zoom in on something, you can press crop to fill and you'll get this white border around the outside. So currently your video fills that frame. If we scale that inwards, this frame will actually become what is shown in your end video product. So we can choose what we want to show, maybe move it around to there and hit the tick. And our video shot is now zoomed in to that shot. Now at any point, if you're applying effects and you don't like them, you can hit reset all and that will set everything back to default. If you've got shaky video footage, you can come over here to stabilize and tick the box and that will do its best to analyze your footage and try to remove as much of the shake as possible. I've seen it work well, but I've seen it struggle in a lot of cases as well. So it'll definitely come down to your actual video footage as to how shaky it is, just to how good of a job it's gonna do for you. You've also got speed control up here as well. So you can speed up and slow down your clips or play them backwards in this panel. So you've got your speed over here, normal, slow, fast, freeze frame, which is where it's paused, or you've got custom, which is where you can enter whatever value you'd like or a percentage of speed that you'd like. Okay, so once you've got all your effects in, it's then time to bring in your audio and to work on the audio in your project. So we'll come back over here to My Media and we've got our audio track that we imported there at the start. So we'll click on that and drag that down to our timeline and we'll move it so it starts at the start of our video. Now, just the same as all the other clips, we can pick it up and we can move it around. We can shorten it so that it finishes at the same time along with the rest of our video. And once you've got your music tracks or all your sound effects and everything in, then you can go through and start adjusting the volumes so that everything sounds the way that you want. So you can see we've got this line here across the middle. When we put our mouse over it, we get an up and a down arrow. You can adjust your volumes simply by clicking on that line and pulling it up or down to make things louder or quieter. Now typically with music and a video like this, your music is going to be much quieter than the actual spoken parts so that you can hear what's being said. So the same applies with all of these clips up here. We've got that line, we can adjust the volume up and down depending on the video itself and how loud the audio is. So I'll just undo that now. And the other thing you can do with your audio clips is you can add a fade in or a fade out. So by moving your cursor over the clip, you get these little circles on either side of your clip. If we click and drag to the right, then we can add a fade. So you can see that little line there. Starting at the start, our audio is 0% right up to wherever our volume level is set at this point. So we can apply a fade out at the end too. So our audio is gonna play through at maximum volume until it hits this time and then it's gonna start fading out. And you've got that same control on your regular video clips as well. All right, so now once you've got all your music files and everything in and you're happy with the overall edit, now it's time to look at the color correction or to tweak the colors in your video. So once again, click on your clip, come up the top here, and we've got some settings around the color balance, around the color correction, and we've also got some filters and things that we can apply as well. So in under filters, essentially this is like what you would find in apps like Instagram, where you've got some preset templates that you can use to create different look and feel in your video files. Personally, I stay away from these, so we'll hit cancel, and I'd come back over here to the first one, which was the color balance. And in here, you could do a basic auto correction just by hitting auto. That's gonna do an automatic adjustment. You can see it's tweaked things a little bit, or we could reset that. We can come over here to the next one, and this is where we'll get some more controls to be able to further refine our look here. So down here, we've got the dark areas of the shots. Up here is the light areas of the shot. So if we grab this black one, we can adjust how bright or how dark our shot is or the blacks in our shots are. And likewise with the brighter sections, we can make them brighter or we can darken them off a little bit depending on what we want our shot to look like. And all of these other circles in the middle are adjustable as well. You've also then got your saturation so as we boost this one up, we're adding more color in. And as we drop it down, we're removing the color from our shot to make it black and white. So you might want to add a little bit 
of extra color in there, depending on how good or bad your original video footage is. And then you've got your color temperature on the end here. So you can add more blue to your shot or add more yellow to make it warmer if you need to make those adjustments just by moving this slider left and right. Now it's really important to remember that all of these effects that we've applied up here are applied to an individual clip. If you want to apply them to the rest of your timeline once you're happy, then you can copy that clip by pressing Command C or coming up the top and choosing Edit Copy, selecting the rest of the clips that you want to paste those adjustments onto or apply the same settings to and choose Edit, Paste Adjustments. You can either choose which ones you want or just press all and those same settings will be applied through all of the clips that you've selected. And that applies to your volume levels as well. Now you might be wondering why we saved the color adjustments until last. Now a lot of people will jump straight in and adjust the colors and tweak all the effects and things straight out. And all that does is put your computer under more load because on every little frame that it's showing you a preview image of, to make you edit faster, it's also then gonna be loading and applying all of those color adjustments and effects to your timeline as well. So that is why we edit in this sequence, to make editing the most seamless experience for you. So now that you've finished adjusting all the colors in your video, it's time to export or to save your video out. All you need to do is come up to the top right-hand corner, the share button here, press on that, and you can share direct to places like YouTube or Facebook, but what I would suggest is that you save it out as a file. And that way you can save the file on your computer and reuse it as many times as you'd like. You can give your video a name by typing the title in there, a description if you'd like to. You get to choose if you wanna export video and audio or just the audio. It's pretty likely you'll want video and audio. You can also adjust the resolution of the video. So you've got choices of 4K, 1080p, 720, and 540. Our footage here was 1080, so we'll leave it as 1080. And you also get to adjust the quality. Now the quality is gonna be directly related to the file size as well. So you can see it high selected. Our file here is gonna be 182.9 megabytes. If we press best, 1.12 gig. So it's a much, much larger file. So depending on what you're doing, you'll either wanna stick with best, but you'll end up with a really large file or you'll wanna use high and still get great quality but have that smaller file size. And the last setting is the compression. You got the choice of faster or better quality. Now this really comes down to the speed that it's gonna be saving your video file out at. I think if you're not worried about time, then definitely choose better quality. And once you're happy with all the settings, just press next, give your file a name, choose where you want it to save and press save. And then you'll see in the top right hand corner here, your file is saving out. All right, so those are the fundamental steps for video editing that are gonna work no matter which video editing software you're using. Now, I've put together a free guide stepping through the entire process and it's linked on screen now, so you can download and print it out or have it on screen to follow along next time you're editing. So click the link on screen to download it now. And while you're editing, if you wanna get an awesome new animated intro for your content, then check out the tutorial linked on screen now for a step-by-step run-through on exactly how to do it. And I'll see you soon.